In the hills and ranges we trained upon for war, we are together again. Some for the first time in a decade to remember 57 of our brothers from the 9-11 generation who gave all. Men who represent this generation's sacrifice. Let us now also not forget those 3-1 Marines and sailors who served and sacrificed in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Some of whom, as I mentioned, are with us here today. All of these thundering third heroes represent in their great courage, service, sacrifice, deeds, and spirit, the very finest men our nation has produced. Today, now, in the words of President Kennedy, we reveal the best of our nation by honoring and remembering our brothers who gave all. They are with us now. Feel their spirits among us. Remember their smiles. Remember their quiet courage. Remember the happy times. Celebrate their lives. Know that they have found true peace. From Filaka Island in Kuwait, the 1,100-kilometer march up to Baghdad, west to the Al Anbar province, Abu Ghraib prison, Nasawa Salam, Zaidan, Garma, Shahabi, the oil for food warehouse, Delta Base, India Base. Fob Abu Ghraib, the schoolhouse, clearing the city of Al Fallujah from the train station and phase line April, down through the Joe Lawn, the Blackwater Bridge, the Pizza Slice, the New Bridge, Kilo's Palace, Raider Ranch, through Queens, on to the bitter counterinsurgency time in Haditha and well beyond to Garmsir in the Helmand. Our thundering third Marines of the 9-11 generation have shouldered the load, they have shouldered the load in America's longest war to date. And they prepare at this very moment now to go forward again as part of the 15th Marine Expeditionary Unit to once again guard all that we have dear and cherish in this nation. This stalwart battalion has again measured up. It will measure up, it will continue to measure up. 57 of our thundering third heroes their faces adorn the quarter deck of honor in RCB, made the ultimate sacrifice in operations enduring in Iraqi freedom. Men who, like their forebears, were brave, treasured, and loved. Every Marine and foreman a beloved son, someone's best friend, some were fathers, all were our brothers, all left loved ones behind, and all will forever be missed. As survivors, we are forever changed by the experiences and the comradeship and the love we shared on foreign shores and in time since and in time now. I believe that I speak for all 
when I say that all of us now and in time to be have a living duty, a duty that transcends generations and is even stronger because of this generational connection that all Marines share. Just a couple of short weeks ago, we laid to rest Sergeant Tom Enos, George 3-1, up at the Good Shepherd Cemetery in, in, a, in a wonderful uh, coincidence in the city of Huntington Beach, 3-1's uh, adopted city who adopted us. And I don't think anyone who was, will ever forget the, the dining in they hosted for us when we came home from Iraq up there. Uh, amazing. Uh, we lay Tom to rest. Tom was a, a 30 caliber machine gunner. He carried his machine gun up a rickety ladder an inch on. He cleared soul. Uh, he was down in a, in a curb behind his machine gun and he heard a vehicle behind him and he looked back and Colonel Puller, the regimental commander, had a 45 in his hand and walked over in front of his jeep and asked Sergeant Enos how he was doing um, in, in Seoul and he went up to the reservoir and, uh, and we, just, we just laid him to rest. And I just, I just learned that a Corporal Samuel Sergeant, who I don't know, didn't know, who served in this battalion and deployed to Afghanistan, who was in the 81's platoon, um, that we lost him a couple of days ago. Um, and so the, these are important to us. It's important to know where our people are, to care for them and their families, to the best of our abilities. It's a sacred duty. It's a sacred duty also for all of you to, to live a full life for them. It is what they would have wanted. To honor and remember them and find a true peace for ourselves. Staff Sergeant Choi, retired Staff Sergeant Don Choi, not too long ago, and that was my message to him in the National Museum of the Marine Corps. Where are you, Staff Sergeant? I know you're hurt. Where are you? Find that true peace. I'm going to close my remarks with a poem. And it is entitled, True Peace. It's written by a man named Black Elk, Native American Ogallala Sioux, spiritual leader who lived on this earth from 1863 to 1950. The true peace, the first peace which is most important is that which comes within the souls of people when they realize their relationship, their oneness with the universe and all its powers. And when they realize that at the center of the universe dwells Wakantaka, the great spirit, and that this center is really everywhere, it is within each of us, this is the real peace. And the others are but reflections of this. The second piece is that which is made between two individuals. And the third is that which is made between two nations. But above all, you should understand that there can never be peace between nations until there is known that true peace, which, as I have often said, is in the souls of men. True peace. Major. Sir Battalion, First Marine Regiment, killed in action, Iraqi Freedom, and Operation Majority Freedom.